All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be introducing Chris Michael Harris to you, who is the founder of Startup U. How are you doing, Chris? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Excited yeah, to be here. Absolutely. And what we're going to talk about today is something that's probably, I would say, crossed a lot of people's mind, maybe more than ever during the last couple of years as we've gone through this strange pandemic and all the associated issues that have come with it and uh, everything else happening in the world. And that is ditching your nine to five or who knows, could be your eight to six, your seven to yep. ten, whatever it is. Yeah. And, and building your own business. Uh, so let's get straight into it, uh, Chris. Uh, you know, maybe kind of instinctively, a lot of people would think that, uh, you know, maybe I should do this. But maybe at this moment, they think it's a bit of a paradox. They think they don't feel secure in what they're doing They're They want to do something else. But at the same time, they're not sure whether the timing is right. Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it. I really do. Um, and I also think that people are overwhelmed um, or, or it, it's the most bizarre thing in the world, John, because um, you would never expect somebody would get into brain surgery and they wouldn't go through schooling and, and shadow and, you know, do the, do the things you do to become a brain surgeon. And yet mm -hmm. starting a business, statistically speaking, has one of the highest failure rates. In fact, it's probably on par with winning something, you know, in a casino. To, yeah. I'm not exaggerating this. Uh, and yet we just think that we can just leap in and just do it. So I think there's a lot of fear of the uncertainty. I don't know what to do, but also then there's some real fears that we can address where it's, I'm not in financial position to be able to do that. And both of those can be addressed practically. And now more than any other time in human history, in my opinion, and I just listened to your episode previously about the age of information is dead. And I firmly believe in a lot of what you guys were talking about, but from this perspective, from this vantage point, there's so much out there now that it's never been You've never had a better time ever than right now. And I'm talking about in all of human history, literally, than to start a business than right now. There's so many ways to make money uh, and in regards of climate, right? Regardless of what's going on with the, the economy, the, the right now, I firmly believe is the best time to do that. So we're going to talk about all that today. So I'm excited to get into yeah. it. Excellent. Uh, and yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, there, there are so many ways you can do it now. And, and really, you have a depends on what you're doing, of course, but you right. have you have access to global markets now in a way that you never had before. Right. So let's get back to your first point, Chris, is, and I totally agree with this, is when it, when it comes to most things to do at work and starting your own business falls into that is we're pretty bad at actually going and learning and getting the education and the information we need. I mean, a lot of people would start a business with an idea, maybe talk right. to a couple of friends and jump straight in. And then there are so many things that they're suddenly confronted with that they weren't expecting. Right. Well, I think for one, um, there is that aspect, right? It's okay. I don't even know what I want my idea to be. There is a process of going through and mechanizing. Okay. How do I test this idea? Um, there is a, there is amongst all of the many things you can be doing. There is a step, believe it or not. There is a protocol step-by-step step that you should be going through. doesn't mean you're never going to address some things. It just means not right now you're going to address those things. So I'm a firm believer in doing much of what you just said which is, okay, I have this thing. And I usually tell people the best way to come up with an idea is not the cute, fancy, sexy idea. It's usually identifying problems in your own life, scratching your own itch. So being observant of the problems that exist in the world that people are willing to pay for potentially. Then it's analyzing it on a, on a scale of, does this provide frequency or does this provide high utility, right? And so I like looking at it on a sliding scale. Frequency meaning Facebook, social media, where people are getting on 110 times a day, high frequency, right? Using it all the time. So testing your idea against, does this have high frequency or, and this could be a combination of the two, does it have high utility? So a real estate agent or getting into the real estate game, that's high utility. You may only sell your house once every 10 years. You may live there for 30, 40, 50 years. You don't need a realtor, but that service they provide, I mentioned brain surgery before, yeah. that's high utility, right? Very <laughs> rare only few people can do major utility in your life. So you're going to pay more money for that. You, what you don't want is to have neither of those two, because then you've got, I don't care how sexy your idea is, right? It could be the greatest idea in the world, but if it doesn't have high frequency usage of your potential user base and it doesn't have high utility. And by the way, the, the golden gooses and where the investors love why everybody now is the Uber of this 
is because mm -hmm. Uber provides both. People need to communicate. Yep. They, they need to commute. They need to get to work, and they use it every single day. It accomplishes both. So investors jumped at that, and that's now everybody's like, "Well, I'm the Uber of this. I'm the Uber of this." I hear pictures all the time. I'm the Uber mm -hmm. of this, and because it's because they accomplish those two. So it's really figuring that out. Then it's going to interviewing your market, right? Taking this idea to them, and then saying when it comes to X, right? So in Uber's case, let's take that for an example. Yeah. Uber's case. When it comes to getting to work, what is your biggest challenge, right? And then listen to your audience and shut up and navigate them through that process. So when it comes to what your solution that you're trying to provide, what is your audience's single biggest challenge, right? And then listen to what they say and navigate them through that process. Now, what's really cool and the reason why you should do it in this specific order and, and, and glean this information and make sure you're really validating that and then going through an analyzing competition and making sure that you're saying, okay, what are they charging? And then where can I be competitive in the market, not top or bottom of the market, not just undercutting the market? Very, very important. But what we can do is we can extract this data that we gather from all of that R&D work that we're doing. And we can actually use the words that our users, the people we interview, that they explain their problems. They talk about that. So if somebody says, you know, Chris, um, I would love to start a business, really interested in that, but I just, I'm really overwhelmed by Facebook ads. Right. Like I know I need to do that, but it just really overwhelms me. I've looked at the platform. It just really like it just seems really complex. Well, I'm not going to go online in my marketing materials, my sales materials and say, we help you with social media. That's not what they said. What they said specifically is I want help. I'm overwhelmed by Facebook ads. So in my in my when you write your sales material and say what they specifically cited and then you amplify that and you're running ads yourself and they read your text or they hit your sales page. That's when you see people commenting and saying, oh my God, Facebook's listening to me. I knew it. You're in my head. How did you know this is what I was thinking? Right. Because you extracted that data and deployed it in your marketing and sales materials, not just guessing in cutesy stuff. But mm -hmm. so many people, John, to kind of wrap up my point here, they say, I'm going to jump into business. They have no idea what they're doing. They don't know the steps that they should be going through and the mechanisms they should be deploying at those specific points in time. What they do today is they jump into Okay, I'm going to create an Instagram profile and put entrepreneur on it. I'm an entrepreneur. Right. <laughs> and then they just start posting stuff. It's bottom up marketing, not top down. What I'm talking about is top down. It's who's your audience? What's your offer? What are you going to sell to them? And then how do we segment out some of those messages from that offer, knowing that audience to push them from the, from the, the, the social media content you have into wanting more of that versus bottom up, which is I just put shit on social media and hope that it resonates with people. Yeah. Right. And that's just no. one example about, among many of how people are entering into business. And then, you know what? They didn't have a plan. They get it wrong. And then they quit and say, ah, well, it was a bad idea, or I'm just not meant to be a business mm -hmm. owner, an entrepreneur, but they didn't give themselves a true opportunity to really succeed. Yeah. There's a couple of things there. I just want to revisit there for a second, uh, Chris, that you mentioned. One of them is that, that idea that you said of asking about a problem, right? Asking, you know, what is your biggest issue? Because it, because in, in my experience, a lot of people will come to you and say, Chris, I have this idea, and then they'll pitch the idea to you with the idea they have, and you being a nice friend and whatever was oh, saying, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's interesting. That's great. Yeah, that could really work. And off you go and think, okay, cool. I've asked a bunch of people; they all like my idea, so I could go. So I should go with it. So your idea of actually flipping it around and going problem backwards is is something I think anybody listening or watching should should take away immediately. Yeah, and I'm a big fan. Ryan Levesque is one of my mentors, and this is his orthodoxy. And he wrote the book called Ask, and that's exactly what he talks about. And so I've, I have used that on my own. And anything I do, whether it's a new product, a new business, or even like small little nuanced things, we run it by our audience. We'll send out an email. We'll do – in social media, this is, again, why the power of the internet. I look at social media to a large degree as getting micro feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Instant micro feedback. Because if you have an idea for something, you can literally run a poll on an Instagram story right now. And say, what would you like to learn more about? Instagram, organic Instagram, or Facebook ads? Or YouTube or podcast, right? And, and you'll get that instant feedback that you wouldn't get otherwise. You can take that same method, methodology and go to something like Google Trends or go look at what people are searching for. Go to Uber Suggest. Those things before we didn't have access to. Those yeah. data points is not something we had access to. So it's really about, and we talk about uh, another thing that I've learned is uh, finding the river of opportunity, right? And so- You'll see what people are searching for in real time, the trends that they've been searching for over historically speaking. So you can see if you have uh, a trend market or if you have something that's been sustainable over the course of 5, 10, 20 years, and all you're doing is basically tapping into that and figuring out what the market wants and then where do I fit amongst the competitive analysis that I do. It, it, it literally can be as simple as that. 
Yeah, and I think that's a, that's fantastic advice for people out there. And the second thing that you mentioned, and and I really this really resonated with me, is the specificity thing. Is that is as you said, like not don't go I happy with social media. You know, I go f- um, because in business today there are so many things that you need to get done, but there's a lot of very very specific skill sets you need occasionally right not all the time and that's why things like upwork and that have become very popular because it's very easy to slot in a resource for what you need however getting back to your point is like when i'm looking for a resource i'm looking often for somebody very very specific so if you have social media i'm not going to probably even read your profile but if i'm looking for somebody to help with instagram say just for instance or whatever or instagram ads i'm going to look for instagram ads right yep and when people are reading through your sales page, they should literally think you are some kind of, you have telekinesis, like you, yeah. <laughs> whatever the one that you read people's mind, not telekinesis when you move objects, uh, but they, they should, should think cool that too. literally you're in their, you're in their head. Like, you know yeah. what they're looking for immediately because of that. And, and so that, that is readily, you can readily accomplish that when you're dialed into the market, when you're dialed into the data points, when you're dialed into those interviews that you do getting feedback those are all things that are super possible even for somebody that's not a marketer i think the big misconception we have john is that these people that are doing what they're doing in business you know specifically let's talk about online yeah. business um is that they're just these brilliant savvy marketers right and they just woke up that way and they're just the jerry Maguire of marketing and hmm. i'll tell you right now i'm not a good marketer i i'm not it's one of my my achilles heels in business and it actually has hurt me in many cases and even i have learned to be able to deploy these things because you're, I had the big misconception that people were just inherently good at marketing. It is a right. learned skill. Mm-hmm. It is a learned practice. And anybody can pick up those things. But it goes back to my previous point. you got to prepare yourself. You don't just walk into the, 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 the surgery room and just start cutting up somebody's head. Like, that's not, that's not how it works. It's not how you start business. It's how you start marketing. It's just, it's, just, it's a false narrative that we have. So when you work when you work with and through startup you and that when you work with uh, people who want to become entrepreneurs right who want to start their own business, what are some of the things that surprise them that maybe they weren't considering when they got into it? Uh, part of what I just said was is a huge aspect of it. Um, I think what the biggest thing is is that they think they have to be doing all the things at once. I mentioned that already too, right? They feel like they have to immediately start a YouTube channel, or they immediately have to be on seven different platforms advertising their, bar, you know, marketing themselves on social media. Uh, they have to buy all the latest and greatest equipment, right? And, and so I think the first thing is let's take this thing step by step. Let's take this thing baby steps. Uh, I, I I'm a big believer, and I'm I. I kind of use this as a metaphor and I think it really resonates with people a lot sometimes when people are starting a business they look at this big mountain that needs to be climbed and it is a big mountain to climb mm-hmm. starting a business and so what happens is is that they're they're they, they they look at that mountain for so long the longer you keep looking at it the more it feels like it's this grandiose thing because now procrastination has come into play and you you kind of create that internal friction where now it feels like it's going to take longer and be harder than it probably would have been to begin with and so it's a matter of taking those little steps, making progress, looking back and be like, oh, wow, I've made a lot of progress. I'm not at the top, but I'm focused on this little you know, area that I wanted to achieve right here. I know who my market is. I know what my competitors are doing. I know what the data points tell me. I have everything established. I, you, you, you make that monumental step, and it's why we broke things down into the crawl, walk, and run phases of starting a business, right? Mm-hmm. Because anybody, before you start running, you don't just start sprinting. You, you, you crawl first. No, that's what babies do. They crawl first. And so everything we teach in that specific module of our program helps you do just that. Let's make it easy. What are the first few steps? How do we make things, how do we get the ball rolling, right? Both on the professional side and the personal side of things, right? Yeah. I, th- I think, and I think that's a really incredibly um, important one just to underline again, because I do agree with you is a lot of people set goals, like make monumental goals for themselves or whatever, which is great. And, and you know, to be encouraged, but as you said, they keep the focus on the peak and, and not on the steps in front of them. And I think the other thing, too, is we live in a kind of weird culture today. I call it the shortcut culture, you know, the instant gratification right. and all of that. Right. And, and so often things do take a little bit longer than we would like. Of course. Um, but you have to be prepared to be in it for 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 the long haul. So, right. you know, how do you ha- how do you help people with that kind of natural impatience or or wanting you know to to be able to skip ahead a few steps or run before they can walk? 
Yeah. Well, the, the good thing is, is that normally they try and then they are coming back to the base. Right. So they learn the hard way pretty quickly that that is not going to be a, a, an ex, a, a expeditious way as much as they thought it would be. Uh, but one, but I, I tell people this, and this is really, really important. You could have a single offer, a single funnel, and a single ad, and you could run that up to half a million dollars or more. You could literally make a million dollars off of that. And, and sometimes, in many cases, we'll have people that come in and they're like, you know, I'm really busy. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm whatever. And, you know, I just, I'm doing this on the side. So I don't have a lot of time and I'm not very technically inclined. And I'm like, okay, well, let's focus on what's the offer and what's the, what's the most minimum viable product, right? Everybody wants, and this is a big challenge for entrepreneurs, for people that are entrepreneurial inclined, not just entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. but also aspiring folks that are inclined to be entrepreneurs. Unless we have the grand, right, Amazon, right? Like the full, like we've covered the whole nation and we're selling the world. That's the vision. So we're visionaries by design, by nature, right? And so the problem is, is that creating a single landing page doesn't feel like a win for us mm -hmm. because we, it's not the thing yet, right? It's not the, it's not the big win yet, right? So I think we tend to make things more convoluted than they have to be. And, or people think, well, that's not going to make an impact. So I'm just going to jump ahead and get to what I think is going to make an impact. And that's when you find yourself kind of in that turbulent space of just trying stuff. I think people don't realize how, and, and I've experienced this multiple times. This is I'm working on my third multi seven figure build already, and none of it required outside funding. And every single time it started from nailing the basics, having a single offer, having a single sales process and putting people through that pipeline. And that's literally all it entailed. Now you can get more complex and do other things and have ancillary offers and all those things later down the path. But when I get people to really focus on this is possible if you just do one, two, and three, X, Y, and Z, just create a single landing page. It doesn't have to be on your website. You can literally go to uh, uh, landing page builders, right? And yep. just, you can use uh, click funnels and that's all you have to use. You don't even have to have your own website and you can literally start making sales. In fact, some people make $10,000 doing that. Like the people I just referenced, just having that, just having a landing page, not even a full on lead pages, not even having a full website. So when you tell people that and you kind of give them some direction, it helps not skip the steps, but it is very tempting. Yeah, and, and 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 I really like what you said there because you mentioned the word focus again a number of times, and I think that's critical. That's critical to anything you do, but it's 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 very very critical to starting your own business, particularly as you may have a finite amount of capital or time or whatever it is to put into it. So not being distracted, and we live in a highly distracted world. And as you and as you said, you know when you know entrepreneurs are visionaries and stuff. So there's all these things calling them from the sides. Yeah. Uh, so maintaining that focus is, is, is critical. And we all have comparisonitis. You know, I think yes. that's the primary reason people try to skip ahead is because they think they're so far behind someone else. But what you, what people don't tend to realize is you're building a foundation. And, and what, what I like to do is build sales systems that can be scaled out. And, and I think people don't realize how quickly, um, you can scale up, as I mentioned, but also you're looking at somebody else's tomorrow and you're comparing it to your today. That doesn't make yeah. any, right? Like they've, they've already gone through that season and, and to a large degree, I love social media, uh, but social media has really uh, caused us to judge ourselves and compare ourselves to what other people are doing. And we can get into all the fact that they're probably smiling to a camera and reality is not necessarily what they're presenting it to be. Mm -hmm. That's a different conversation. But either way, I think one of the beautiful things that I had in my first business was this was before all of the Instagram and social media madness, right? It was just prior to all of this. I mean, people, we were marketing on social media, but this was like 2012, 2013. It wasn't the rave it is now. And I often tell people this, it was hard. It was hard and it had to be because I didn't have the information that exists now. But at the same time, it was also a beautiful thing because I wasn't just sitting there watching what everybody else was doing and comparing myself to that. I was able to just do what I was doing and immerse myself. So just focus on winning your race. Like focus on running the race that you're running and not focus on what everybody else is doing. And that's a huge, huge thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially because, you know, people love to talk about these like overnight successes or companies that went from zero to a billion in two seconds flat and yeah. not realizing that there is that there are thousands and thousands of other companies and other businesses who built themselves up steadily and they're doing just fine. Thank you very much. And plus there's a load of others who tried to be overnight successes. Yeah. And, 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 it's, never, and, it's, and it's never as fast as what they present it to be. It's like, yeah. Oh, well, we were an overnight success, but we also spent five years of R and D or we also spent, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we did a lot before it was an official business. 
uh, before it just grew out of nowhere. And there is a rare occasion. Usually you'll see second or third time founders will have that kind of growth, but mm -hmm. it's so rare that you have a first time founder jump to multi-millions is, you know, within, a, within the first few years. So you have to give yourself some grace uh, and prepare yourself financially on the personal side of things to be able to do what's necessary to stay the course. Because a lot of people, mm -hmm. they just don't stick with it. Yeah. And, and sometimes, I mean, when, when you advise people, like sometimes people will start a business on the side and obviously and maintain their, you know, their nine to five or whatever, yeah. while they're trying to build this up on the side and see, does it work? Is that a model that that works or does it take a particular type of person for it? It absolutely to work? works. There are two ways I recommend, two avenues people can take. And I think that doing what I did is it, the first time was, is not advisable. Um, I just jumped in and I'd had maybe a month of personal runway and it was very, very painful. And I, I was pushing back into a wall. I was doing laundry in my bathtub. I was jogging because I couldn't afford gas money. I mean, it was bad, right? And fortunately I exploded that business and grew to a million dollars within the next like 18 months from that point, but it was still more painful than it had to be. So I like two different paths. So you have the, the night and weekend warrior, which is what you're describing. So you still keep your job. You carve out some time contingent upon your schedule to put work into your business. Now, fortunately, what we're talking about with taking things step by step and in, in, in stride, right, is you're not having to do all this crazy stuff. You're just focused on the next viable steps, right? So you're putting in an hour, maybe two every night, or you do it on the weekends. So you say, hey, I, you know, during the week, it's just crazy. I got kids running all over the place. There's no way I can carve out two hours every night to work on my business, whether that's in the morning or whatever the case may be. So you're going to work a full-time schedule on the weekends, eight hours, eight to 10 hours, Saturday and Sunday. And maybe you do an hour Monday night and Tuesday night, and that's your full 20 hours. So you're looking for about four hours, five days a week. So 20 hours a week is what you're really looking, looking for to start getting momentum in the business. So that's the first route. So night or a weekend warrior, and it can be a combination of those two. That's usually older folks, right? So people that have real responsibilities, people that have kids, people that have a mortgage, people that have car payments, right? Because they can't, it doesn't make any sense to take that kind of risk to leave your job. Now, to validate that works, I have a friend that I know personally, I didn't hear it through the grapevine, that literally built a seven-figure business working two hours in the morning, two hours at night, and a little bit on the weekends with a full-time job and with a girlfriend. Seven-figure business. He quit his job to walk into a million-dollar company. So it's entirely possible if you go through and do the things you're supposed to do and if you just commit to that schedule. Next, if you just are done and you're younger, usually my younger folks do this, 20s, just graduated, little responsibilities. You've got three roommates. Maybe you've got $500 in expenses a month, right? Before food and this and that. So let's call it $1,000 yeah. to be safe. Well, realistically, with the gig economy, which is again what I wish I would have had, because Airbnb mm -hmm. and Instacart and Uber and Uber X and Uber Eats and all this stuff is the, is literally was the biggest blessing to entrepreneurs or entrepreneurial types. Because now what you can do is you can say, hey, here's the deal. I'm not going to get rich off of this. That's not the plan. But I can work during the day and I can Uber at night and I can go pick up a bunch of drunk kids, my friends probably, and bring yeah. them home and get paid for it and hit the surge charges and make 50, 60 bucks a night and it pays for what I need to pay for. And I can pick up a combination of things. So me, I, that's the route I went. I jumped in. Now, the problem is 2012, 2013, there weren't the volume of those type opportunities. There wasn't Uber yet. There wasn't Instacart. There wasn't DoorDash and all this other stuff, Airbnb. But man, if you could just have a, a sofa in your apartment and rent it out because you live close to downtown and you know kids want to whatever. Like that's a phenomenal opportunity. I would have a plethora of those different side hustles. And that's what you're doing. You're not trying to get rich. You're just paying your bills so you can work on your business full time. That clears up your bandwidth so you can work. Your quote unquote nine to five is your business. And then you spend three to four hours every night or on the weekends or whatever, making money doing those side hustles, gig economy type stuff. Yeah, I think that's great. So there's, so for whatever wherever you are in your in your life whatever situation you are in your life there is a way of doing this um that you can make work with your current circumstances yeah and eventually you're going to quit right eventually you're yeah. going to stop it's not sustainable to do what i just described on either path it's not sustainable it's a short-term solution until you decide hey this business is worth continuing to pursue or you know we've gotten to the point where I can afford to leave my job or leave my side mm -hmm. hustles. So either way, you're looking at maybe a year to two years of doing that. So you, there needs to be urgency in building your business, but it is possible to do short term. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so all of Chris's information and Startup You, et cetera, will be below this video. But before we go, Chris, please tell people a little bit more about yourself and also Startup You, because I'm sure people are very interested after hearing this. Oh man, about myself. So I, I think I was the type and maybe people resonate with this. Um, 
I just always saw outside the, the, the hour for pay model. You know, even when I was really, really young, this is a, a common denominator I see with a lot of our students is they people, they just always were doing something. Everybody had a car detailing company or everybody was mowing lawns or, you know, everybody was doing something to make money while their friends were, were enjoying the summer or hanging out or playing video games. They were out doing some kind of a side hustle like that. That was me, right? So going through and, and doing that through high school and I actually in high school started a lawn care business and we made like $16,000 as high schoolers between junior and senior year. Um, got to college and more of the same. And finally my senior year, going into my senior year of college, started a moving company because it is something I had experience doing, uh, helping an older couple. We got paid a lot of money doing it. And I said, let's go for this. Let's just build a moving company, help our college student friends. Um, within 36 months, that was a million dollar company. Hit 1.2, went on to get a $7 million valuation in that business with a, within a short time frame thereafter. Um, and I just said throughout that process, man, I wish there was a school for this. I wish there was education because I was learning all the things now that I know that I teach inside of the Startup U programs, primarily Startup Launch Factory. Um, had I known that, I could have avoided a lot of really painful mistakes, right? And the more you grow and people get this wrong, they think that money is the cure for all ailments. In fact, the data actually shows that 70% of businesses fail by year 10, get this, regardless of year over year income, regardless mm -hmm. of year of your revenue. So what that means is, is that it's not just making more money solves all the problems. The mistakes that you make, regardless of the amount of money you, you're making in the business, can still kill the business at a rate of 70%. That number terrified me. And that's like from the US Bureau <laughs> of whatever, right? I looked it up and it was a pretty <laughs> scary statistic. But anyway, so I just wanted to create something that gave people um, an opportunity to have a, a better shot at success with those failure rates so high. Uh, so that's what we started been in the online space for some time. And then startup you is, is the brainchild of those experiences, like taking the knowledge that I learned from multiple seven figure builds and then putting it in this so people can achieve this. I want people to have this life. I remember what it was like graduating from college and, and not knowing what I wanted to do and not knowing that entrepreneurship was entrepreneurship was a full-time career path. Potentially. Um, I was in a pretty dark place. You know, I didn't fit in. Everybody knew what they wanted to do. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an astronaut, whatever. I had no idea, even, go, even going into graduation. So it's a beautiful path. I love it. I love the freedom that it gives me. I love creating my, my life by design, and I want to share it with people. And that's really what Startup U is trying to accomplish and why we started this program and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Listen, um, again, all of Chris's information will be uh, below this video. Uh, and I really look forward to you checking it out. If you've got an idea, you know, you know what they always say, like the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. Right so mm -hmm. right now. So if you have an idea in your head, if you're not satisfied, whatever you think you could do something else, go check out Startup You and uh, and give yourself all the tools you can to be successful. So thanks again, uh, Chris, Chris Michael Harris. And my name is John Golden, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.